this is a neo reminder about neo stock and the price action and the movements up versus down neo stock can move up much faster than it comes down here's the example i gave in a tweet not too long ago back in may of 2020 and from that time frame for about six months through november of 2020 we saw neo stock move from three dollars and fifty cents to fifty five dollars now conversely to the downside it's taken about three years for the stock price to move from forty five dollars to sub four dollars under four dollars now that is just noteworthy for me but there's more that's kind of playing out here that i'm watching and kind of sitting back and observing in fact one of these is the reason i'm doing this video so more on that in just a second that's the best earnings incoming and the announcement from neo about that but the other piece is the ftds that fails to deliver have been spiking so we'll talk about that as well let's move on though right now this is the reason i'm doing the video today and for date and timestamp this is august 22nd 2024 it'll probably be about noon central standard time by the time i get this out this is the reason i've been waiting for this to do this video we got the announcement from neo september 5th will in fact be their second quarter earnings conference call this is the best report we're probably going to have seen from neo so with that in mind uh and the reason i waited to to do a video until i saw this announcement from neo is wall street has been wrong on these dates they've been projecting dates for the earnings for neo and they're usually wrong on it so i waited to see and hear from neo now that we have the update what i had said previously is i thought we would have it around this time frame the reason being if we look back june 6th march 5th december 5th that's kind of consistent with the cadence right the fifth of the month about three months later and the other thing that i've noticed about neo is they tend to wait and let the other uh chinese companies a lot of them do their earnings first before neo does theirs i don't know if that's intentional or not it's just something i've noticed so Anyway, let's keep it moving, though, because this is a tweet that I put out when I saw that we had a really big spike on the NEO fails to deliver. We had over six million of those. And so then uh, I at that point, I took a brief. I basically hit the pause button on doing videos uh, for a couple of different reasons. I'll get into that a little later, probably towards the end of this video so we can keep kind of hitting the data as we move forward here but this was the previous video that i did the last time we had a big spike that was over five million but this six million that's a really big number and as i said more on that in just a bit here's the other piece and this is really really encouraging for a true long-term neo stock investor like myself to see in the month of july the bevs that's battery electric vehicle sales neo was number five here's what's awesome they have far and away the highest average price point for the selling of their vehicles from anyone above them and that is very encouraging because the premium sub segmented piece of the ev market has been the slowest to move over from ice or gas vehicle sales to true bevs where neo is the leader so with that in mind i'm curious especially with onvo their first sub brand being announced and, and launched i'm just wondering uh how neo can maintain with their you know for example in the month of august will they have another 20,000 delivery month. And then is that going to be the new kind of floor or baseline for them for the Neo, the premium brand? I hope so. I think it is possible, but I'm not ruling out the possibility of Onvo and the L60 maybe um, taking some of the sales from Neo, but it also could work the other direction where it could actually encourage, especially depending on how Neo packages and presents and, and offers things from a value add proposition. For example, if they can't keep up with all of the demand uh on the delivery side with this new launch of the sub brand maybe they're able to turn some of those uh interested parties in the onvo sales into neo sales so that's something i'll be watching but i also can't help but wonder how fast we'll see onvo pop up on this list as well so exciting times ahead for those of us again who are true long-term neo stock investors now let's talk about it this is the fails to deliver data and because i wasn't doing uh videos for that couple weeks I just posted on this but here's the spike this is the six million it's over six million in a single day it also comes on the heels of I think within the same week roughly that we had almost three and a half million now folks there are a couple things that to me make this really really interesting one is the ownership in neo stock and I'm I'm zooming out so we can see the full history of neo stock with the fails to deliver and one thing that is in my mind is retail ownership of neo is very high and if for example these spikes in the fails to deliver represent when there's naked shorting going on so in other words if there aren't enough shares 
for big money institutional investors who maybe even want to buy NEO. And they're having to create fake shares to either suppress price so they can get it cheaper or to just get some in the hopes of shaking out weaker or shorter term NEO stock investors. I just, it's one of the things that's in my mind. Now I've zoomed out. So let's look at this for just a second. I wanted to point this out. 5 million was the big spike I talked about when I saw it. And we hadn't seen anything like that uh, since going back to before the big move by NEO stock back in 2020. The yellow line represents the stock price action for NEO. And I'm just going to remove it for a second so you can see the difference. This is now only looking at the fails to deliver for the full history of NEO in the US stock market. And what you'll notice is we had really big numbers back here in the early days of NEO stock. And then they dropped off. And during that time frame when they dropped off, that's when NEO stock made its run. And so, not surprisingly, with the fails to deliver picking up over these last three years, what have we seen? Well, let me reinsert the price so it becomes a little more obvious. We've seen the stock price take off when those FTDs dropped off, and we've seen it slowly be brought back down over the course of these three years. So when I see these big spikes that we hadn't seen with the fails to deliver, unless you go back to pre the big move by Neo stock, I'm just wondering, was this a short squeeze? Are we going to see another one? Are we going to see it soon? especially in light of probably the best earnings that NEO is ever going to report coming in in early September. Now, that's not all I'm thinking. In fact, this is one of the other things that I posted because I did take a brief break from doing videos and I just basically said the NEO global community is awesome and is the biggest reason I continue to do content on NEO. I'll still post things here and on YouTube. So on Twixter and on YouTube, I was posting things, but basically taking a quick break from doing videos while watching to see if we get broader market volatility ahead of earnings. This still could be in play, the broader market volatility. I am still watching it. So that's also in my mind. And yes, it means we could see NEO stock go down even further. So it's, are we gonna see a short squeeze? Are we gonna see NEO stock go down? I have no idea. I think both could play out with that. And regardless of that, NEO stock remains my favorite long-term play and a unicorn, meaning a company the likes of which we've never ever seen before so and that's one of the reasons at the bottom of the screen i've got the three major growth phases for neo market awareness profitability and battery as a service but the battery as a service is tied specifically to in my mind the neo the premium brand and them having a million neo sales out because by then we'll have a better sense of what things look like on the battery as a service the subscription side of things uh, also, we've seen enormous growth from Neo Power and a lot of interest, new parties. The energy play for Neo remains one that's hard to evaluate and is still really early, but man, I'm bullish on that long term. And it's one of the reasons, again, I, I call this a unicorn. We've never seen a company like this before, which is why I'm just excited for the future of this company. And the stock price really hasn't been a deterrent for me. In fact, I know a lot of other retail investors, not just me, have brought down their average price of neo stock while increasing their position and again now if we consider that relative to the big money who at some point might want to buy this stock again if they're not already buying it i just think that makes for an interesting dynamic especially if we could potentially see more fails to deliver spiking and eventually some sort of a short squeeze or something like that i'm not in the play for a short squeeze but i'm not going to ignore the possibility that it could have happened and we may see it again so with all of that I'm going to finish on just a couple of other more sort of personal notes and share this. <clears throat> this is this was an intentional tweet that I ended up pinning patience, discipline, humility. These three words are easy to say, but they are difficult to live. And you can really break it down. And whether you want to talk about investing, whether you want to talk with relationships, um, business wise, I think across all aspects of life, these things matter but they're much easier to say than than to really live uh and so that's part of the the journey the process is just trying to improve you know becoming aware understanding taking action whatever that looks like uh and then for me it's always about remembering the importance and i think the value and humility uh, no one is perfect and, and for me i just need to focus and continue to keep working kind of in line with that and one of the reasons that i stepped away uh from the Sorry, I was scrolling there randomly. I was going to maybe go off on another random tangent, but I won't. Uh, I'll finish my thought here. <laughs> my 
my reasoning, part of the reasoning, there, there are more things going on with me than I ever offer. One is this, um, you know, if I do a video on YouTube and then spend one to two hours, let's say, in the comment sections uh, responding to comments, that obviously takes time, uh, which I'm happy to give and offer. I think it's, it's uh, appropriate and I actually like doing it because of the people who have been supportive and take the time to watch my content and comment with their thoughts, opinions, and that sort of thing. Um, but especially as this kind of long-term beat down suppression, you know, predatory shorting perhaps of the stock price for NEO has gone on. Uh, it's, it's become one of those things where it's been interesting to see even some of these quote unquote, long-term NEO stock bulls or investors, you know, go by the wayside or leave, or maybe they never were. I don't know. It's really not my place to say, but from an observational standpoint, what I recognized and noticed, and it personally started impacting me as it started taking more of my time away from even being able to properly comment and respond to everything. It was taking even more of my time uh, trying to just filter through. And, and I was ultimately becoming more distracted. And that's not the best use of my time. So I wanted to streamline things a little bit. And with that kind of step back, you know, recollect myself. And that's why I'm coming back and offering this little bit of an explanation, because for those who do watch my videos to the end, I want you to have that increased awareness of where I'm coming from and what I'm thinking of that sort of thing. So I, I do try to get to the comment section. It matters. I really uh, appreciate when other people share their thoughts and opinions, whether I agree with them or not. Uh, you're taking the time to be here in the comments. So I want to say thanks for that. But I also had to sort of say, OK, you know, at what point do I you know, need to kind of cut down or minimize the distractions when they are sort of taking me from some of my other projects and other things that are also important, uh, other investments as well. So with that, thanks for watching to the end. If you made it this far, click the thumbs up, hit the notification bell, especially uh, because I should be coming out with more content now that I'm sort of getting back in the mix. I got a lot to catch up on. I won't catch up on everything. That's the reality. Uh, I understand it, but that's also what I wanted to offer a bit more about, you know, sort of my personal decision to take a week or two away. Also still watching for the broader market volatility potential. There's just a lot that hasn't played out, a lot of lagging things happening. So I'm just watching them. Uh, but I want to know from you, ultimately drop it in the comment section. What do you think? Neo stock, are we going to see a short squeeze? Will we see it in the short term? Will we see it into 2025 or beyond? Um, again, I'm not in here for that, you know, sort of move or play but I'm not going to discount it. And I do think it is possible. So second quarter earnings, I'm looking forward to it. it should be fun, exciting. Have a great day. I'll be back with more content before you know it. See you all again very soon.